you can strike with the butt. Always try and remember the butt. I love using the butt and it's very, very powerful. Hi there, I'm Matt Easton of Scholar Gladiator. I'm a YouTuber, but I also teach people how to use historical weapons according to old systems of martial arts. And today I'm gonna to be looking at Assassin's Creed 1, 2, and 3, some of the fighting. So he's essentially got a switchblade up its sleeve here, which is a really, really cool idea. Now, it may seem like a totally fantasy thing. We do have lots of historical counterparts for that. They are known as punch daggers in the West. Uh, this is actually an Indian example with gold fancy bits on the on the hilt. Indeed, these were extremely popular in India, used as you might think, uh, usually with reinforced points to get through armor. And uh, this was one of the most typical kind of sidearms actually in India. But we do find European equivalents as well, punch daggers of various sorts. These are highly regulated in most modern legal systems, but uh, antique examples are legal to own, hence I have one to show here. I'm not too keen on the way he's stroking the edges there. Let's assume that this is not a cutting weapon, it's only a thrusting weapon. Simple lesson for you, if something might be sharp, don't run your fingers up and down the edges of it. So one of the first things to say as well about the weapons of the people who lived in this part of the world in the Middle East at this time in 1191 is that predominantly Saladin and all of his armies would have been using straight swords. That's right, not curved swords as you see in almost every movie and video game, but straight swords. And this is a common misconception at a slightly later date, say about 100, 200 years later, you could perhaps make that general distinction, although by that time, ironically, the Europeans also have curved swords some of the time as well. So one thing to mention here as well is they seem to be training with real swords. This is one of my bugbears. If we look in Lord of the Rings, you see people training with their real sharp swords. There are several problems with this. One obviously is safety, but another important one is you are going to mess up your lovely sharpened sword. If you repeatedly clash blades against each other, they are going to get damaged and they're not going to be very sharp anymore, which means that when you need to use them for real, they're going to be damaged, potentially have chips in the edge, burrs, so that's an issue, obviously safety. Here they're just training. Now, if we look at what people actually trained with historically, the predominant training weapon is usually a stick. <laughs> so that's right, when you were a kid and you picked up a stick and did some sword fighting with your friends in your garden or the park, that was basically how a lot of people throughout history, most people throughout history have trained fighting is with sticks. Our hero jumped down onto a knight and seems to have been using his retractable kind of assassin's knife. It went underneath the helmet to the neck. And this is a very, very important point because when someone's covered in armor, it's not easy to thrust through chainmail. It's almost impossible to cut through it, but it's pretty difficult to thrust through it as well. So overall, the movements, the cutting motions, the parries, the reposts are really, really nicely done. My one major, major issue with this, there are several opponents here one two three four five there's at least about eight opponents to begin with. Why are they attacking one by one? <laughs> so one little detail there that's actually quite subtle, and if you blink, you'll miss it, but he maneuvers around to get a route of escape. So initially he's kind of surrounded, and when you are fighting against multiple opponents, what you absolutely should try to do is get all of your opponents in front of you. What this means is that when the people are attacking you, they get in the way of each other, and of course you can see them all as well and engage them all with your weapon. So tactically, this was great. What was not tactically great was when he put his sword away and pulled a knife out. Why would you do that? A knife, being short, has a huge disadvantage against a sword, which is long. Why would you put the sword away and pull a knife out? I have no idea. <laughs> I love the fact that the person using the big axe, the way it's animated, you get a sense of momentum of that axe. It doesn't move in the same way as a sword. It does move like a big top heavy weapon, which is really, really cool and realistic. Right, okay, thrust through the back plate that comes out of the breastplate. Never gonna happen. No way, no way in hell. You can't thrust through plate armor like that. A plate armor will stop most arrows and crossbow bolts and pretty much any hand weapon. Grazie, amico mio. And I have something for you. Oh, more of the codex. 
I like the little detail that they're talking about codexes and scrolls, and that shows that the people who've made this game understand this is the Renaissance, and it's very important to acknowledge that the Renaissance was all about learning, and that's what made it the Renaissance. That's why weapons like this, that's why we know how to use them, because at this time, particularly in Italy, Germany, they started making treatises telling you how to use weapons like this. So what I literally do is study codexes and treatises talking about the fighting arts. That's how we've managed to reconstruct a lot of the lost and forgotten old fighting arts of medieval and Renaissance Europe. So I love that they've put that into the game. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most subtle weapon in the world, that has to be said. So it's just a gun. So obviously guns existed. In fact, guns existed from the 13th century onwards. They started to be used in warfare, in Europe anyway, in the 14th century. By the date of this Assassin's Creed II, which is the 1470s to the 1490s, absolutely firearms were a thing. But you have to bear in mind that almost all firearms at this time were single shot muzzle loading. That means that you have a tube, which you have to pour gunpowder down, then wadding, then the projectile. So they were slow to load, not very accurate. Sometimes they blew up, they weren't very reliable. Sometimes you tried to fire them and they didn't go off, but they were incredibly powerful. Oh, I, so I really like that. So he doesn't have a large weapon to block with, but he managed to close in and block and through a series of relatively plausible movements, disarm the swordsman of their weapon and take the sword. And you know, that's one of the first rules of self-defense. If you can't run away and you've got a fight, if someone attacks you with a weapon and you don't have a weapon, get the weapon off them. So he did very, very well there. And again, kick to the groin. He re-stomped the groin and I approve. <gasps> Looks like he thrust the guy through the groin as well, but it's great to see a thrust included in the repertoire. Oh, I love the little animation there of grabbing the person's musket. So one of the disadvantages to long pole weapons have greater reach and they hit with more power. You can grab the shaft, okay? So a sword is more difficult to grab because it's almost entirely made of blade. But when something's got a long wooden handle, essentially a shaft, you can grab it. Really nice thought, thinking, really good choreography. As I say, if this was in a movie, it would look great. It's really well thought out. And again, using both ends of it there. So while you've got a spiky end at one end, you can strike with the butt. Always try and remember the butt. I love using the butt and it's very, very powerful. It hits like a club, it is a club. So it's a fantastic weapon system. It's not just a firearm. Of course it is most importantly a firearm, but it is in addition to that, a strong, heavy lump that you can clout people with and stab people with. Very effective weapon. And I think actually our hero was actually quite sensible to sheathe his sword and get a musket and bayonet because the musket and bayonet for an adept person is a more useful weapon than a sword is most of the time. <laughs> My only really small criticism is he sheaths his sword in its scabbard at the end there with blood all over the blade. That's gonna go rusty really, really quickly. So better to wipe the blood off before you put it back in the scabbard. But apart from that, awesome. I absolutely loved it. So one of the interesting details of a tomahawk or anything with a projecting T-shape at the end is you can hook with it. So rather than just blocking and striking like a sword, for example, where you've got just a basically long straight lever, because you've got a projecting angle, you can actually pull things and even push things with that 90 degree angle, which gives you a lot of additional techniques, hooking around people's knees, pulling weapons out of people's hands that you can't do with something like a sword. So he did actually parry a sword strike with a tomahawk, and you could absolutely do this. I mean, if someone swings a sword at you, you can just parry it with a stick. The only thing I would say is that most tomahawks have actually got quite slender shaft, and you probably would only be able to parry a sharp sword a few times before the shaft started coming apart. It would be nice if that was represented in the game, because a tomahawk would not sustain a lot of hits from a sharp blade before it would become unusable. In fact, before the end would just fly off. As well as having the hooking ability of the end of that tomahawk at 90 degree, by holding the blade point downwards, you've also got ability obviously to stab and slash, but you've also got the ability to hook there as well. So they're really making quite extensive use of that in this particular choreography, hooking with both objects in order to come close enough that the person can no longer use their bayonet or their sword, which is 
really cool thinking and it shows that someone's thought about this fight he's fundamentally at a disadvantage a reach disadvantage because he's only got a knife and a tomahawk and they're both quite short so you need to come close to a distance where your short weapons are now an advantage instead of a disadvantage you two clear off I personally think that the combat has got better and better each time. Assassin's Creed 3 had the best, most complex and most delightful choreography to watch from my perspective. 2 was pretty good and 1 was more basic, which I guess is what we'd expect. From my point of view, Assassin's Creed 3, the fighting was the most complex, the most choreographed, the most detailed. So for me, the games got better as they went along. For more videos from Matt Easton, make sure to watch him react into Tears of the Kingdom or Star Wars Jedi Survivor.